Hey, what's up guys? Mint City here back again with another video and today we're doing something a little bit different. I am gonna be telling you guys my thoughts of Catalyst Black after being accepted to the test flight and playing it for a good amount of time. Now you guys know I am a mega fan of Vainglory. It's my favorite mobile game to date. It's a shame of what happened to it, but I am still a fan of Super Evil Megacorp. I believe that they are a fantastic and very unique uh, company that really does value mobile. So I'm going to just tell, tell you guys my thoughts of it after playing it uh, in a very casual manner, just like me and you are just chatting, you know, we're just chilling, chatting with each other and sharing our thoughts, just rambling them off. Now I'm going to put my bias for Super Evil Megacorp and Vainglory aside. I'm not going to be trying to compare this at all uh, to Vainglory because I think they're completely different games in my opinion, and that's what Super Evil Megacorp is trying to do. And... Uh, yeah, so just leave a like and pop a sub if you guys are new or if this helps you. Or um, please let me know in the comment section down below uh, what your guys' thoughts of Catalyst Black is. I'm really interested to have a discussion with you guys. If you disagree, agree, let me know in the comment section down below. Anyways, so first off, the graphics and sound design are actually really good. I know a lot of people don't really like them because they are comparing it to Vainglory, but if you just look at this, they're trying to make it available for more devices. You don't need a high-end device to play this. And with what they had to work with to make this available for older devices, I think this game looks phenomenal. It has kind of a Breath of the Wild look, which I know is kind of being a little overdone now, but they do give it its own flair, and it looks crispy, man. This game looks crispy. There's no denying that it's a good-looking game, in my opinion, especially for the phase that it is in right now in Test Flight. Now, the music and sound design, what's here and what's available is very nice, it's very good, and I think it fits the quality that Super Evil Megacorp uh, usually want, uh, tries to aspire for creating world building and stuff like that, because they are good with that. Um, I think it just does need to be fleshed out, there needs to be more of it, but what's there and what's at, uh, available to us now, really good in my opinion. Now, the, the drop-in, drop-out mechanics, so you can play this game and then you can exit out of the app stop it like say oh crap um now my food's here i can eat you set it down then if you open up the game again after you're done eating it will plop you right back into the same match as you were in earlier and it's like nothing happened which is really cool so when you drop out it either puts a bot in there uh that plays in your place until another human player will be slotted in or I don't really know how it works. Uh, I don't know how much detail, like I, I am saying, I'm just going off of what I've played. And I think that's how it works, which is a really neat concept. I think it really is good for the mobile space as well as the gaming space in general. People don't have a lot of time. Drop in, drop out. Play sessions can be as long or as short as you need them to. I think they're definitely onto something with this. However, my mind, the, my mind just thinks differently. It's just like, oh, well, I'm not that impactful then. I can leave and join back and... It's like nothing happened. My teammates don't even notice. Like in other games, when a player quits out of a match early, you feel it, man. You're like, frick, man. We have a open spot on our team. We're playing down by one. So now we have to try even harder. It's going to be more difficult to win. You see what I'm saying there? So that drop in and drop out, my mind's just been wired to think, well, okay, well, if it, my team doesn't feel that I'm gone, then am I really being that impactful? So I don't know if that's a positive or a negative. I think they're onto something though, and I think it's positive in, in general. Now with the PVE and PVP, this is interesting. It gives it kind of a mobile, uh, a MOBA feel where you're having to kill PVE creatures and they give your team buffs or bonuses or it reduces the cooldown for your superpower that turns you into a huge monster that can just wipe people out in one hit. Um, I think they did blend it pretty well. The thing with uh, PvE creatures is sometimes it just feels like a chore and it's not that fun to fight them. And this one, I think they're onto something as well. I think it still needs to be improved further. But these creeps, or whatever you want to call them, can obliterate you, man. Like, they do a lot of damage, so you have to be careful. They aren't very mobile. They are mobile to a degree, but I think they can uh, be more aggressive towards players and be more of a threat. I think that would be really cool. Um, I think they're just still fleshing it out, but it's still really good for what's on hand, in my opinion, as well. Now, the game modes, there are quite a few available, and they are very team-centric, so there's nothing like super uh, you solo, fly solo. This game 
honestly allows you to play however you want. But the objective, the, most of these uh, game modes are very team-based and team-oriented, like capture the flag and stuff like that, which I do like. They are really fun. Um, as far as the controls, the controls feel really, really responsive, really smooth, very impressive. Never had a problem with the controls. However, there's an aim assist function in the settings that you can move up and down. And it, you can make it pretty strong, dude. And it makes, like, other than your special weapon skill shots, your basic attack, you don't really have to aim it very well unless you're facing a very skilled player who dodges a lot and does a lot of stuff. There's a good skill gap in this game, surprisingly, with the controls that are on hand. Um, but with that uh, auto aim or aim assist, whatever you want to call it, uh, you can increase that drastically. And it makes it so that you don't have to aim when you're killing uh, PvE creatures, that's for sure. You don't need to skill shot or do anything. And with players, it's the same, man. Like, it's not that. Like, people have a great aim, and it's because it's aiming for them. And I know they're trying to aim this towards the casual bit player base, but, um, I mean, Brawl Stars makes it so you don't really have to super... I don't, I don't know. Brawl Stars really has that good blend of having to skill shot as well as having that casual option to aim for you. And this doesn't apply to everything. There's certain weapons and stuff that you do have to skill shot really well. But I think the aim assist can be too strong and takes a lot of the skill out of the game. Um, the character customization is awesome. I think they're definitely onto something. I th It does drastically change your stats after a while and you can level up gear. So I'm kind of hesitant. For, from what I can see, it looks like it's going to be um, pay to progress faster. It's not going to be necessarily like super pay to win, but it will be slightly pay to win, I think. Um, but there's so much customization options and stuff that I don't really care. They have a shop where you can purchase new items and stuff, and I'm sure you can earn those through gameplay. So it'll be interesting to see how they flesh out the monetization further, but I, it's not going to be like Vainglory where there's no pay to win whatsoever, um, in its base mode. I think this is going to have some pay to win elements, but monetization was an issue with Super Me Evil Meta Megacorp and Vainglory, so... I want them to succeed. If that requires a little bit of a pay-to-win mechanic, then so be it, as long as it's not aggressive. Um, but uh, I do think damage values need to be fleshed out a little bit more, too. I know when you change into that creature, you're supposed to feel unstoppable, and you're supposed to be able to just... But you can literally kill people in one hit, and the cooldown is super fast. So... I don't know. And you get to be that creature for quite a while, too. So if you get good, you could just destroy people. I'm, that can be part of it. I just don't know if that's how they're trying to balance it or not or anything. And, hey, I enjoy being the creature and destroying people, so I don't care. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how they balance it. I do think there's some damage balances that need to be changed as well as cooldowns to a degree, but it's nothing bad. This game is definitely playable. It's definitely fun it's in its current state. I, it makes me excited. It's kind of a disbeliever, but now I'm excited to see what they do with it. This has limitless potential, and I think it could be added on to quite a bit over time. So those are my thoughts. Hopefully this ramble made any sense. Hopefully it helped you guys out or get you stoked or uh, inform you more about Catalyst Black. Um, I'm looking forward to the game. It, this is promising. It definitely needs some work some, still, but that's why it's in test flight. That's why we're giving feedback. Um, and uh, again, please leave a like and pop a sub if you guys are new or you enjoy mobile gaming content because that's all I make on this YouTube channel. I don't usually make videos like this. I usually introduce you guys to new mobile games that will be worth your time. But anyways, thank you so much for watching and take it easy.